Aloha Day Church disciples who are logging on. Welcome. Welcome to Day Church. I'm going to try to log on to see who's coming on there. Oh, quite a week. Uh, good news as they're letting some of these essentials go back, right? Aloha, Emily, as you're logging on. Uh, hope everyone's doing, doing well out there. We got a, another good study this morning. And I'll continue to remind you if you are not on our Day Church email list, just send me your email and we'll get you on. Uh, get the notes uh, out there for you. We're going through Tim Keller's devotional. Uh, There's a song that just came to mind that I thought, oh, it, it is so fitting, so appropriate. Aloha, Mike, Susan. Welcome, welcome aboard. <laughs> I don't know if I can see all the uh, names. In fact, I can't to see all the names logging on. So <clears throat> if I don't recognize you, aloha. Thanks for joining in. I want to start off with uh, the song you may be familiar with, this older worship tune. Thank God it can never get old. <clears throat> The spirit of God because it's the word of God. Yeah. Hey mom. <laughs> How's it? Everlasting 
everlasting God and um, such powerful words from the, from the scriptures. Well, Father, thank you so much for uh, the gift of your everlastingness, <laughs> uh, your eternalness, that you are forever. And Lord, uh, we thank you that in Christ we are forever. Uh, that's so good, God. You are so good that you've uh, created us to be forever kind of people, Lord, people of eternity. And uh, thank you for Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Spirit of God, thank you for revealing Jesus to us that living here on earth and living through circumstances, and whatever they may be of trials and uh, disheartened, uh, discouraging times, uh, we thank you that we have that hope. <laughs> we have you as our everlasting God. Thank you. Lord, we lift up one another. Go ahead, just uh, just names that come to mind. Uh, God hears. He's so good that way. Uh, let's just pause. Lord, we lift up brothers and sisters to you. Lord, we lift up the hurting. We lift up those who are fighting diseases. Oh, Jesus. Financial situations. <clears throat> Lord, we lift up our family to you. Lord, we lift up our state. We lift up our country. We lift up our president. We lift up our, our city, states, uh, leaders. God, have mercy on them. And have mercy on us, Lord. We just ask somehow your sovereign, everlasting godness would, would be revealed. Jesus, Jesus, we thank you. Uh, Lord, uh, thank you for the greats uh, like uh, Robbie Zacharias, and Lord, even locally, Willie Kay, his, his family. Just comfort the family. Lord, comfort uh, Robbie's wife, Margie, the family, Johanna, and uh, we thank you for the hope, Lord, that uh, they have and, and the security, the confidence. Um, and uh, Lord, I know so many going home to be with you and uh, those close to us as well uh, in our family and our church family. But we, we just thank you for just the everlasting hope we have in you, our everlasting God, in Jesus' name. Ah, amen, amen, amen. Well, aloha, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead and... Uh, share life with one another online and uh, share prayer requests and, and praise uh, reports. And, and if you have uh, any questions, again, I'll get, get online and look at comments. And if you have questions, thoughts, uh, I'll look at that, get back to you. So yeah, uh, we're, let's jump in. I, I got, uh, you know, just you know, lots of good scripture. And, and again, uh, you know, thank you. I'm, I'm being led of the Lord through the devotion uh, as we review Tim Keller's devotional uh, this past week. Uh, I, again, I sent out the notes. Those of you who are online and uh, you're not receiving that, just let me know. Get in touch with me. Send me your email and uh, we'll get you on that list. So uh, rather than like read every scripture from basically last Thursday through this Wednesday. I'm going to make some comments. And, and again, those of you who have thoughts, uh, go ahead, jot that down on, online. Uh, what stands out to you? Scriptures encourage one another as we interact with, with the Lord, with His presence, His Holy Spirit, and with one another. So uh, feel free to do that comments on, online. So uh, let, let's start in. And where I do want to take this is we're going to end up in Matthew 5 in the Beatitudes. And I feel like for me, uh, the, the Lord's uh, connected the themes, uh, some of the themes and truths in the, in the Beatitudes uh, with this past week's devotion. So I'll, I'll share a little bit about that. But under the title, uh, uh, Wednesday, May uh, the, the 20th, say, do we have the 20th there? Oh, no. Let's see. Today is the 20th. Hello. I'm low on my notes here. Excuse me. Let me catch up. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Did I do... <gasps> I did this... Did I cut and paste this coming weeks? I think I did. 
Oh, oh. Uh, I'm a week ahead. My bad. I just, I just realized that. Oh my, I was looking towards the week. I'm gonna go with it. All right, so uh, those of you who have the notes and if you have the devotional book, uh, we're gonna be moving into uh, this week's devotional. So my bad, we trust God's good in it all. So um, it's the word of God. But in, in and under seven deadly sins and pride, uh, May 20th, uh, he talks about it, Proverbs 23, 20, verse 3 and 29, 23. Now I want to read this one. It is to one's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Pride brings a person low, but the lowly in spirit gain honor. Again, the connection to the Beatitudes uh, as well in the theme of the Bible, right? But but that proverb, Keller brings out uh, self-renunciation. And, and he says uh, forgiveness as socially and emotionally uh, healthy as it is, is a form of self-renunciation. And we live in a culture that counsels self-assertion, which is so true, right? Interesting highlight. And then he says uh, later on in, in that devotional, our society then does not produce forgiving people, but rather those who are quick to quarrel and assert their honor. Again, I you know, those kinds of things, I think it, it's good. We search our hearts uh, for, for, you know, things like that, qualities like that, that can lead us away from the Lord and, and hinder relationship. Uh, I know I'm <laughs> that's quick to quarrel, uh, asserting honor. I don't, I don't think I do that, but, you know, this desire for honor, and I think we have that innate thing in many of us. So our culture will continue to grow in strife, uh, you know, with those kinds of characteristics. And he says, most of us have been formed by a culture that nourishes revenge and mocks grace. I thought that was uh, really interesting. I'm going to jump down uh, past uh, the 22nd. And, and again, uh, my, my apologies, but uh, we, we trust the Lord in this, this for this uh, coming week. Uh, he talks about seven deadly sins and he goes into gluttony. So again, I, I don't want for it I don't want this to be a condemnation thing uh, from my side of things or my heart. Uh, but he does bring this out and within the, the book of Proverbs, Saturday, May 23rd. And I say what I did earlier just because uh, you know, I try to be health conscious, but again, I have to watch the, the judgmental thoughts and attitudes that, that I do have, that I do deal with at times. But I think this society, and we know society and culture in general can focus so much on sort of physical health. We steward that, but we focus so much on that and the outward, right? The look, the weight, uh, the appearance, uh, et cetera, the dress uh, that, that we can I mean, we can be gluttonous in not just food and drink, although that's the context. But uh, that's why I say no, no condemnation. But he is addressing, and there is, I believe, a conviction of the Holy Spirit that comes for each of us uh, in uh, our our health, how we're stewarding, and and uh, what we're uh, idolizing uh, before the Lord, uh, what we're growing addicted to. Uh, in food and drink and so we have to be careful but so he brings that out may 23rd uh, when justice is done and this is sorry proverbs 21 15 17 and 20 he brings out clips of these passages when justice is done it brings joy to the righteous but terror to evildoers whoever loves pleasure will become poor so you see that that's that loving pleasure right which can lead to different uh, sort of roads and then he goes uh, it says, whoever loves wine and olive oil will never be rich. The wise store up choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp theirs down. So he talks about pleasure uh, loving. And uh, let me read parts of this here. Uh, it, and I have this in the notes. I'm reading from the middle portion of what I noted. Today, this word means only overeating, but traditionally, it meant the inability to live a life of delayed gratification. Gluttony offers a whirl of dancing, dining, sports, dashing, a very uh, fast, uh, very fast from place to place, 
uh, to gape at beauty spots. So gluttony, gluttony may lead to literal addictions to food, drink, drugs, to gulping them down. So I was thinking, well, what, what am I sort of gulping down? That's, that's that inner craving, right? That can lead to, to various areas. But even if it does not, the spirit of gluttony is always uh, to take the easy way out. That, hmm, that It's so true, the vices. It's easy to go to the vice um, uh, when, you know, when you're dealing with uh, being overwhelmed, worried. Again, th those are the fixes, the vices, the go-to, uh, whether it's food, drink, or TV, social media, and again, so many different ways. Uh, I think that we can, uh, you know, fulfill that in a, in a bad way. So Sunday, May 24th, uh, the scripture is three, Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, and then uh, chapter 20, verse 1. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing. Your vats will brim over with new wine. Wine is a mocker and beer is a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. And, and he titles this uh, drinking on Sunday, May 24th. Proverbs calls wine a mocker. Intoxication humiliates and ruins. So Proverbs warns against inebriation, uh, uh, a state in which the safeguards of self-control are removed. Uh, that's the guardrails, self-control, and over, an over-dependence on alcohol for facing stresses of life can lead to economic insecurity and acts of abuse, injustice, and yet, as, as Proverbs 3, 9, and 10 shows, Proverbs does not uh, counsel, necessarily counsel abstinence, for wine is also seen as a good gift. And then he gives references there. Jesus himself made wine uh, one of the two elements in the Lord's Supper. And so again, uh, an over-dependence on, right? What are we just gulping down? And then again, that's, uh, that leads into addiction, right? Our, our term uh, today. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to skip uh, May 25th, and then uh, it goes... Um, Tuesday, May 26, he moves into another uh, heading, another uh, topic, Seven Deadly Sins, Sloth. And, and then I want to jump into the Beatitudes, but I want to get to this because I think it, it, there's aspects of the Beatitudes I want to tie in uh, with this. So pride, gluttony, slothfulness. But here <clears throat> on Tuesday, May 26, the craving of a sluggard will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work all all day long he craves for more but the righteous give without sparing and he says sloth doesn't love things lazy lazy people have inordinate cravings for ease rest comfort uh, ironically lazy people live dissatisfied lives because they are not dissatisfied with their lives enough uh, then he, I like this, he, uh, Dorothy Sayers, he, he quotes this, defines sloth as the sin which believes in nothing, cares for nothing, seeks to know nothing, interferes with nothing, enjoys nothing, <laughs> loves nothing, <clears throat> hates nothing, finds purpose in nothing. Sounds like a lot of nothing. It is a lot of nothing. Lives for nothing and only remains alive because there is nothing it would die for. I thought, whoa, that's a, I mean, that's an interesting definition of, of sloth and, and slothfulness. And, you know, for that, uh, yeah, again, we, we all have to just put it, be, put our hearts before the Holy Spirit. And for me, I, in just application, I think there are areas of slothfulness, but I'm, I, I connect uh, areas of slothfulness with the attitude of like why I was just always asking myself why why am I acting that way why am I saying that or why am I not saying that right it's that why in the heart and so that's a good I want to encourage us to to ask that why why are we if you are why am I why am I 
slothful in this? Why do I take a back seat in this and have a lazy attitude towards? And I think spiritually we need to be careful, uh, I think obviously in areas of spiritual disciplines, right? And, and we all can improve, but being careful of being slothful in prayer or in our meditation of the word. And, and there again, I'm, uh, I'm guilty there as well. But then I ask why? Why, why am I putting off? And so it's good to, to process that. I, I want to bridge over into Matthew chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 5. And we'll begin, we'll go right into the Beatitudes. This is Jesus, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. So crowds uh, have formed and, and there's uh, Jews, there's some Gentiles, and, uh, and there's all kinds of social classes of people, from the poor uh, to the elite, from the uh, leaders to the humble, lowly servants, right? Pharisees and, and again, Jews. And, and so there's a, a variety of, of people. And so Matthew chapter 5, and this is out of the New International Version, uh, verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Uh, let me just make a comment. Uh, when, when I read through the Beatitudes, I saw qualities that I want to possess. It's, it's undoubtedly qualities we all as Christ followers want to possess coming from Jesus' uh, heart, from the from the throne of God, teachings, truths that, that he's calling his, his church here and now to live by. And so when I thought of my pride, areas of slothfulness, when I thought of areas of gluttony or the temptations of, of that gluttony and over-dependence and indulgence, I thought, wow, these qualities help me with my why behind the scene. You get it? It's like, it's, it's that attitude, right? What, what attitude is leading this behavior, or this action? I mean, what am I believing or not believing that's causing me to behave in such a way, uh, to be slothful, to have an over-dependence on uh, food or applause, honor, material things? So if, if you can just bridge with me there, it's, it's the whys that, uh, for me, Jesus is touching on the heart. So he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We, <laughs> again, in Christ, I mean, we, are, we are kingdom followers. We are kingdom inheritors. We, I mean, there's like, for me, no doubt in my heart, just because of, of Christ, work on the cross, his intervention, his drawing me by the Holy Spirit and in you and I. So we have the kingdom in us and the kingdom of heaven uh, that's here and there, right? But he's saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. There's a, there were, a, there were a, a lot of poor people in the crowd. So the poor knew what he was talking about in terms of the physical. Uh, of course, he's saying in spirit, right? So it, it's quite a, quite a jolt like, whoa, I have to be like this in spirit, like to be sort of displaced, uh, to be less, to less than. And so uh, again, he's touching on the spirit. So what's on the inside? So there's a poor who can recognize well, this is a low place. And then the Pharisees, leaders, the middle class, they're thinking, whoa. I, again, I don't know what they're thinking. But for me, if we're saying this to the upper class or the middle class, it's like, hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, you know, we're, we're a wealthy country. We're, but Jesus is calling us, calling them and calling us today. To, to have that poor in spirit. What is it? It's a humility, lowliness in spirit that he wants us uh, to, to possess, right? It's a heart 
uh, issue. So in Isaiah, uh, a couple of commentaries connect uh, what, what Jesus is saying to Isaiah. And of course, Jesus, he spoke from Isaiah, but, but there's certainly that theme that God is using in Isaiah 66, verse 2. Isaiah 66, verse 2 says, All these things my hand has made, and so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. Whew. Okay, if there's an attitude we can continue to develop and to cultivate. It's that, isn't it? It's like humility, a poorness, a contriteness, a brokenness in spirit. And he who trembles at my word. So this poor uh, in spirit has that humility, brokenness, uh, a meekness. And he'll touch on meekness as well, but it, it ties in with a meekness, which is not a weakness, <laughs> right? So verse 4, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So again, just to tie into how, how the people are to live this out, right? Uh, there, there was in that society, and I think there is in our society as well. Again, you have if people who are hurting, uh, and whether it's socially, financially, uh, through death, right? People mourn. We mourn with those who are mourning. So wh whatever that circumstance is, it, it, it can be easy for uh, others to overlook, to not feel. That's why to be poor in spirit, to have a meekness, a humility, a, a brokenness of spirit, uh, to be able to, what's that word? Empathize, right? With, with one another. And that's I think God's calling us to do that. And again, it's not just the COVID season thing. It's life thing, calling us to be a people of humility, being poor in spirit, and we're able to mourn with those who are mourning. And again, whether it's in a physical death, someone who's lost a loved one, but it could be someone mourning because of a marriage, because of a relationship going sour, because of kids, grandkids, I mean, relational issues, right? I mean, there's a mourning. And, and so Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And verse 5, blessed are the meek. So here's that tie-in with the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And I want to draw your attention to Psalm 37, 11. Psalm 37, 11. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. So it's, it's that quality of that poor in spirit, that meekness and humility, right, are people of inheritance. And, and they will delight themselves in abundant peace. Uh, this is more of an application for, for me, but I, for me, I, I've, I've found that to, to live a life, to have a quality of heart, and then to, just by God's grace, try to live that out day to day, to live out a, a spirit of humility, of a poor in spirit, uh, a meekness uh, in heart. There's a, there's a peace with that. And, and for me, I believe it's because the, the Lord, you know, of course, we're obeying the Lord and the Lord's calling us uh, to live a, a humble life, in, especially when there's turmoil and strife, etc. <laughs> I've not been humble in, in strife or if I'm argumentative. But there's peace when I'm a person of humility, right? There's peace when you're obeying and working against uh, the pride in you, the going back to the devotional, the over dependence on. There's a peace when I don't yield to slothfulness. There's a peace that when I don't yield to pride or or to the spirit of gluttony to overindulge in whether it's food or TV or whatever it might be. There's a peace uh, that comes and <clears throat> the. The meek are, 
are often and, and culturally in, in Jesus' time and prior to uh, the poor, uh, the, the, the poor associated with this sort of weakness. Uh, they were seen as outcasts. They were seen as powerless. They were seen as disadvantaged, right? And, and I thought, whoa, so many times uh, in the quality of heart, in the, having a poor spirit, a humble spirit, a meek spirit, don't you sometimes feel like, oh, why do I need to, why do I need to be, and, and they're getting ahead. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I feel disadvantaged. I feel outcast. <laughs> That's, again, I go right back to Jesus. Like, God coming in the, the flesh is human and being treated as he's, he did. And, and again, the entrance of a Messiah and a king and the Jews weren't expecting the humble, lowly uh, type of birth and, and, and life of such a king, right? Living among the commoners. So again, I think it's going to be true that as Christians, as we <clears throat> uh, yield to the Lord, to obey the Lord, to develop that poor in spirit, uh, that even in, when we mourn and then we mourn with others, even when there's a, a meekness that we desire to walk in, that we're going to feel disadvantaged. <laughs> we're going to feel, are the poor taken advantage of it? We're going to feel um, uh, abused. We're going to uh, feel oppressed as Christians. Uh, we're, we're going to feel at times powerless in society. Of course, we have the power of God, but it's the power to live this life, right? The power to live Love, joy, peace, a power to live with the heart to mourn, uh, a power to live uh, with the heart to humble ourselves, a power to live uh, with meekness uh, in, in, in relationship to, uh, you know, what we're going through. So it is, it's so powerful. Blessed are the, are the meek for they will inherit the earth and Oh, again, without getting into it, so I'm teaching on First Thessalonians, the end times, last days, but not really all of that and what that entails. But are we asking the right questions in these end times and in these last days? Uh, so, but I believe Jesus is connecting some of this nuance of uh, inheritance of what's uh, to come, right? And inheriting your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that that new earth. So, but we we are inheritors now uh, in Christ uh, because uh, of Jesus. Verse six, verse six. Ooh. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Oh, what does that tie into with what Tim Keller brought out? Slothfulness. I want to overindulge in, <laughs> in, in his righteousness. Uh, man, I, I want my vice. <laughs> I want my go-to. I want to hunger and thirst, <laughs> if you will. I want to be gluttonous for, <laughs> is that even a word? Oh, for, for him, uh, right? I want him to be my addiction. I want him to be my vice. I want him uh, to be my go-to when there's stress, anxiety, when things aren't going right. And, and again, uh, so I, I see that uh, totally uh, tying into uh, that gluttony part of, of Keller's uh, devotional. But blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And then uh, the promise is, yeah, we will be filled. And, and you and I know as, as Christ followers, the Spirit of God is in us. I mean, we're... We're so filled. I mean, just talking now, uh, going over the scripture, I just, you know, I, again, I feel so filled and I am filled. We're, we're, we're gathering around the bread of God, uh, Jesus and his word, and, and it's filling. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Uh, one of my go-to prayers um, 
for myself and then for the peop for our ohana for 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 people for people at Manoa uh, is just be a stirring and a hunger uh, yeah I, again I, I won't get into that so many times I can I, I, I will say so many times I feel like I need to be that I need to lead in such a way I need to put on or we need to as a team we need to present and do church in such a way and it'll it'll help uh, entice and so again, there's parts of that that I believe God totally uses. But when it comes down to it, it's like, Spirit of God, work within the, your family. And so my, that's my prayer. Let's make that our prayer for, for each other, for our own hearts, for our families. I'm praying that for, for my family. Um, and, and so again, you have people in, in your lives besides you Right, that we, we're praying for a stirring of the Lord, that there would be a hunger, not for the things of the world, not for anything else or any anyone else, but Him first and Him foremost. So, so good. Uh, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Uh, this This mercy... I went to uh, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, uh, and um, I, by the way, I got that note from um, my studies uh, in in a couple commentaries, uh, and so I, you know, I, I went there because there's such a tie-in with again the mercy of God, the mercy character, who He is in mercy, because of love, right? It's just like you, you can't separate mercy and love. And 1 Corinthians, we're all familiar with this. As I read this uh, to you, so I've read this. May the Lord stir a, a, a deeper, greater, just the love of Christ. May we hunger and thirst for his righteousness and mercy and love. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Come on, raise your who needs Who needs to be shown mercy and love? Oh, raise your hand right now. <laughs> okay, here it goes. 1 Corinthians 13, uh, beginning with verse 4, just several verses. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. Love is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So being a person of mercy, being a person of love, and love described. So and I would say even mercy described in 1 Corinthians 13 uh, will begat mercy. Right? Mercy will begat mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. I thought, I do desire to grow in giving this, in being this merciful, loving kind of servant of God, child of God, as a husband, as a father, uh, as a soon-to-be grandfather, <laughs> as a shepherd. I desire to, to be that person. But I also know there are times, maybe too many, but I need and desire to be shown that. And we're a people who need to receive that as well. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go with it. Some, there may be a, a one or a few of, of you out there that uh, you, you need to know how to receive that love, to receive that mercy. M maybe, you know, because of, I don't know, sinfulness, whatever it might be, with the Lord, it's, it's, it's like that whole forgive receiving forgiveness and walking in it like stop condemning yourself for 
what you did last year, yesterday, this morning. I mean, seriously, right? So again, it's not like, okay, we forget about the lessons, but washed clean, isn't that true? 100%. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us, cleanse. So, I mean, the message is like receive, receive mercy, receive the love of God, receive his wholeness, his freedom. Um, And even as, again, even as we struggle, I think even in the present, I got a couple, I got (laughs) some struggle. So I, I feel like the Lord saying, even in the present, receive. So that may be for for someone out there. Just receive the mercy, the love of God. And then it you know might be even through the love of God through people to to receive that. Uh, verse eight. Verse eight. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. But again, you see all the whys, like if I act, if I act this way in slothfulness, pride, gluttony, and whatever, you know, you're behaving in such a way that's not right. You ask why, why? I think it comes back to the poor in spirit and the meekness, the humility. And verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart that they will see God. Wow, maybe... My, my vision, my action is demented, uh, uh, blocked it because there's something in my heart that's not pure. Right? So it's, it's good to evaluate. Jesus was saying, blessed are the pure in heart who will see God knowing that there, <laughs> there's people out there that weren't pure in heart. And so I think even, so again, this is some cultural and, and background to that text. And Jesus is just on the scene and he is the son of God, oneness with God, right? Proclaiming God, the kingdom of God, but that he is the way, truth, and life. And so there's something blocking your heart uh, that it doesn't enable you to see Jesus is to see me as God. I, mean, I, I believe there's a, a nuance in there because Jesus is speaking as God, right? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see. People's eyes began, so their spiritual eyes began to be open even after this Sermon on the Mount. Again, throughout as Jesus was teaching, the pure in heart, those seeking, uh, were broken. Uh, so again, it, it didn't come for all the wealthy, etc. It includes wealthy in everyone but the pure in heart the pure in heart you'll see that i am messiah you'll see that i am god and for us it's uh, god grant us a hunger and thirst for righteousness and for a purity of heart that we will continue to see you and and uh, we got to go back to who's ever going to be the purest in heart It's by Jesus, his love, his mercy, what he's done on the cross. I just, so again, there's this co-laboring with him to want to live this out. But no can, no can live this out (laughs) without the cross, the the grace of his life uh, and just receiving. It's like, it's a gift. That's why you just can't work for it, right? So we do, we got to keep reminding ourselves of that as we we preach, teach, as we encourage each other. Live for Jesus, live for Jesus, do this, be humble, be. So even in this, right, we're, we're like, but Jesus, we yield to you, to the grace of your life, uh, your, your life-giving blood and sacrifice. And we say thank you. We just, we receive. That's why I just receive forgiveness. And like, it's done. We can be fully filled and and whole and made pure in heart. Just just like now, like now, people of God. And if you're not doing well and uh, and so just receive. I just pray. And it's the spirit of God has to reveal that to you. 
Receive by the Spirit of God. Spirit of God, speak that to my brothers and sisters watching now. Speak that to us. Uh, reveal that to our hearts. Uh, because of who you are, we are. That's it. <laughs> okay. Blessed are the pure in heart. Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4. Oh, okay, let me do this. Who shall ascend uh, the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Verse 4. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. So there's sort of this connection with life, but a like the strong foundation is this, like we don't lift our soul to an idol or a gluttony, but we just say, soul, <laughs> you belong to Jesus. You are cleansed by the grace, love, and the blood of Christ. And we can stand in your holy presence and in the holy place because you've made our hearts pure and you have made our hands clean. And again, we walk it out, we can't walk it out without having, just receiving, uh, just being in Christ. Yeah. So verse, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. In Psalm 34, 14, if you're taking notes, uh, he does call us, the psalmist, turn away from evil and do good. And he says, be a seeker of peace. Seek peace and pursue it. So there is that blessed are the peace initiators. Okay. We're going to wrap up here at the, those verses, but this ties in, again, with uh, sort of this initiation of living out from what God has given us as Christians now. He's given us a heart, a pure heart, and a heart's desire to be filled with a hunger and thirst for righteousness, for his love, to walk in his love, his mercy, to walk in humility. And then he says, so be a peace initiator. And uh, we are children of God, our peacemakers. So I, I'm just going to jump to an application uh, because uh, so many uh, lives are in, sh in shambles. I mean, there there's... So we, we have that around us, and there may be some of us, right? Maybe a shambles within. There's not peace because of anxiety, this, and again, numerous reasons, finances, relationships. And then we've got our culture in this world, uh, and not just the, uh, the epidemic, uh, but just what's already been going on for years and even centuries. Wars and then famines and earthquakes and, and, and natural disasters, right? People and lives have been affected. And the Lord is calling us in all of this and through the Beatitudes to be people who make peace, who speak peace, because we're a people of peace. So we can be peacemakers because the Prince of peace. Jesus, peace himself, the spirit of peace lives uh, within us. So again, that yielding we initiate out of the, the spirit that's in us, the Holy Spirit, and our spirit cooperating and then initiating. So may you and I be peacemakers. So be a peacemaker who do we need to make peace with? Uh, yeah, it's got to start at home. It's I mean, at home here and at home in relationships. I mean, whether married, single, it's, it's, it's in, in your community, 
family, friends, workplace. Because uh, how else will we represent Jesus well, right? Without having these qualities, the Beatitudes, and uh, certainly inclusive of being that peacemaker. Turn away from evil, do good. Seek peace, pursue it. By the way, pursuing is hard <laughs> sometimes. Pursuing is hard. And uh, I just, again, the word of the Lord just dropped in my head. Like, maybe we, we got to turn away from our present evil attitudes, right? Or uh, there's evil things we can engage in that really, it, it, it jams it up. It jams our hearts up. It distorts our hearts. We're not pure in heart. So again, you see all these just connect together. Um, but maybe the Lord's saying to us, hey, turn away from some of the evil in you, uh, some of your own pride, some of your own overindulgences. Uh, you're being too lazy in pursuing peace. Uh, all right, I'm going to wrap it up here and just read uh, the next three verses, verses 10, 11, and 12, and I'll make a couple comments uh, and we'll close out. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, hmm. for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You don't want to hear that. Verse 11, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. <laughs> that's that's a, a big key. And then verse 12, Rejoice and be glad. I want to say it right now. Rejoice and be glad. Just say it. Just rejoice and be glad. Because great is your reward in heaven. Here on earth, his kingdom come, his will be done. But there's a great reward. And we look towards that hope of heaven. Uh, the place and the person. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets uh, who were before you. They're, they're going to persecute you and I. Uh, we're, we're living in the land of the free, the home of the brave, and we're thankful for that. I don't know what it's going to look like in the end times, but it's according to Jesus and, and Paul and Peter and James and they were living in the end times. And what part of the end times are we living in? This is not the end times message. But in these times, uh, there will be, I believe, a growing persecution. And so we are people who will be ready because he is he he's our he's our Lord. He He's got us. We're sons and daughters of God. And so be encouraged through these Beatitudes, and the teaching of Jesus on the Sermon of the, of, on the Mount for the people of the poor and the people of the rich then. And he's saying to us, the people across the board, he says, blessed are you. And it's because of Jesus. Yeah, wow, so good. Let's pray. Uh, if you have comments, questions, etc., get in touch with me, comment online or contact me and um, just love to dialogue. Just let's continue to grow in him, his word. Father, stir up uh, that spirit you have given us uh, to be, Lord, to be uh, your, your, not just representative, just to be your son, your daughter, your child, uh, and, and to just live that, live that out in this way, Lord. God, you have called us to live this out, to partner, to do, to pursue. Uh, Lord, I just thank you that on the foundation of who you are, our everlasting God and our rock, our strength, who you are, uh, we are. So thank you, Lord. Help us to continue be transformed into your holy and loving image. 
In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we say, Amen. Amen. All right, love you guys, and uh, thanks for just tuning in. Again, we post the, these, and, and then it's on our YouTube channel. By the way, those of you streaming, and maybe you're not familiar, but we have our New Hope Manoa dot tv website and information on this facebook page and all the ways you can kind of stay connected but thank god for just all the ministries that's going on um, just throughout the island and the nation just the churches the kingdom we're kingdom people so love you all oh by the way uh, we do have uh, worship and prayer night so today uh, worship and prayer 2020 on the 20th of each month uh, we pray and fast throughout the day so choose a, a kind of fast so it's good right <laughs> we're fasting from something uh, you know something social media food drink whatever it might be you choose that but let's say Lord we just want to give ourselves to you so tonight at 7 30 Facebook live uh, we'll be doing some worship and prayer time uh, for one another a nation community city so all right join in if you're available tonight 7 30 love you all